less corporate, more independent. You know, the thing that jumps out to me is that Kowalczyk's favorite technique is a spinning back kick, while Silva likes to punch. That means that Silva will probably try to fight close to his opponent, while Kowalczyk is going to try to keep space in between them. Fighters advance! In the red corner, Tiki Silva! In the blue corner, Kevin Kowalski! Fighters, enter the pit! Back it, back, back, back. You ready? You ready? Round one, fight! The Brazilian Tanky Silva says that he fights as a cross between Lyoto Machida and Mike Tyson. Yeah, he's a very powerful individual. He grew, grew a beard. They almost didn't recognize him this time. He's in the red glove tape, the American Kevin Kowalczyk. Ooh. Nice Mike Geary, which is a front kick. Who said that he wants to quote that, she, that he's the future of karate combat. Blue glove tape. Walzik said, look for the flash, look for the spins, look for the acrobatics from me. Silva said of Kowalczyk somewhat dismissively, I think he's an acrobat. I'm not sure if he's a fighter. Spinning back kick down, it's caught. Walzik looking very much like a fighter there, landing that short right hand in the clinch. Hey, 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 Time called by Mike Bell, and here comes the hard warning in referee speak. No, 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 come here, come here. One point. One point break. deduction beyond Oops. the hard warning. One point yep. hitting on the break. One point hitting on the break. And I say stop. Cut in a moment. Stop. Don't hit. That's what they call right. this. Ready? Mike Time Bell, in. an outstanding MMA referee and judge making his karate combat debut, immediately taking charge. Referee speak, there's a soft warning, a hard warning, a point deduction, straight to the point deduction by Bell. Nice back kick. Oh. Big shots from Silva, lands the right hook. Spinning back kick. And Kowalczyk, he told us that he has to watch out for the left hook of his opponent because it's very hard. But he got clipped just a minute before. I think he's angry. One, and he four, wasn't thinking rational. Three, nice ground and pound here. Look at this. Taking the back. Great that run. is legal. It's off the back of the head. Legal strikes. This is a 360 degree sport. Kowalczyk looking for the flash, didn't pull it off. What's the knockout of the night bonus? That's what he's looking for. Silva has also fought in MMA, holds a seven. Oh, big strong left. left. Lands that MMA leg -like shot there. Now looking Two. to finish, taking the back. One hook in, massive shots. Wow. Mike Bell does not stop it. That's the five seconds. You fight? Whoa. All right. He's dizzy. Walzik wants to keep going. Uh -oh. Touch of gloves, right back to work for Tanky Silva. Trying to reach the finish.
finish line. There's the acrobatics from Kowalczyk off the wall. Yeah, that was nice. He used the wall to close the distance, but boy, he's taking a hit. He should have moved away to the sides. Jackhammer shots, and again, the five seconds elapses of ground and pound. Big round for Takey Silva. And to get Kowalczyk a point deduction. Oh, again! Kowalczyk, he said he had to watch out for that punch, and that was the punch that actually sealed the deal. What was he saying about Mike Tyson? Yeah, that he loves his style and he likes to fight like him, and boy, did he show that tonight. The two shots that he connected with, man, the first one almost put him down, but the last one, oh, shh. Well, the first one put him down, but not out. As this we, one was a hard turn. As we were heading into 10-7 territory, Silva never let the judges write down their score. Finishing that with emphasis. It's such a pleasure to talk to also. You know, he's such a happy person. He's so happy to go fight. You know, it's like he enjoys this. I love it. You see just how much that win means to Takey Silva. It's a look at that. That was the short left straight, the Tsuki, as they call it in karate, and then a little ground and pound action. And now we're going to take a look at the end of the fight. You see, and that was the left hook this time that Kowalczyk said he had to watch out for. So, uh, boom! Yeah, nobody expects that, especially if you're a south boy, you throw a left hook. It's very unexpected. They expect straights and the hooks with the right hand, not with the left. Great bit of refereeing there from Mike Bell as well. Immediately recognizing Kowalczyk was done. Ruling an end to this fight. Sporting from Silva never followed in. He knew that was a one punch walk away knockout win. So let's take a look at it one more time in real time. Going. Oh, did you hear that sound from the drop? Oh, shh. Man. Boss, there are knockouts, and then there are knockouts. That's it. You know, people go, oh, karate, are there going to be any knockouts? Well, if you repeat the show in Greece, which was 55 minutes for seven fights, <laughs> yes, there will be some knockouts. Good to see Kevin Kowalczyk back on his feet, and you see the victor, Takey Silva, draped in the flag of his native Brazil. Back to our pit announcer and the great Danny Trejo. Winner by knockout, 215 of the first round, the red corner, Kevin Kowalski. Clean oh, wait, knockout no, win. Tiki Silva, Tiki Silva. <laughs> Nice moment between Takey Silva and Danny Trejo. The boss, that was a huge moment in the karate combat pit for the Brazilian Silva, really showing the punching power. Yeah, he did a great job, and especially, you know, he was talking about it as well. Not only his opponent talked about it, he had to watch out for it, but he himself said, I got a great left hand. The winner, by way of first round knockout, Takey Silva defeats Kevin Kowalczyk. Outside of the Avalon Theaters, right here in the heart of Hollywood, right on the historic Hollywood Walk of Faves, I am Roxy Diaz, and yes, it is all about karate combat tonight. Tonight, the greatest karate masters in the world come together, join forces to show us their best. This is karate combat. <laughs>
This is Karate Combat! Karate Combat has come to the historic Avalon, located in the entertainment capital of the world, to showcase this truly unique and electrifying combat sport, which puts a premium on aggressive striking and rapid fire finishes. On tap, our loaded main card featuring seven bouts with fighters hailing from four different continents. In our co-main event set for the heavyweight division, you'll see the fighter from Senegal known as Black Magic, El Haji Endor, versus the extremely hard-hitting Callum Robb of Scotland. Hey everyone, he of course is the great Boss Rutan. I'm Sean Wheelock. Boss, already we've seen two prelims outstanding. We saw a one punch knockout win. We expect more of the same in this really intriguing co main event. We expect more of the same in our main event tonight. That's set for the lightweight division. Two fighters with one punch knockout power Luis Hoja versus Mirza Tebuyev. Well, Hoja's nickname is the Pitbull, and boy, does he live up to it. He's got everything. I mean, he's got great striking, accuracy, stamina, power. He's got it all. What I like the most of him, though, is tenacity. I mean, this guy will not quit. At Karate Combat Genesis was a prior event that we had. He had a legit double ligament tear in his legs, and he fought the entire fight, almost winning the fight. Now, his opponent, of course, thinks that's a different game plan. He said, I worked hard on my boxing combination. I had a knockout last time. I wanted knockout now I'm going to take advantage of my four inch reach advantage that I have over him my suggestion to him is punch punch move out punch punch move to the sides don't stand still in front of Taik or against Silva because he will knock you out boss our two main event fighters told us they are very comfortable fighting in the karate combat pit the karate combat pit look at this what a beautiful picture this is I love it I love the dimensions everything so now our pit is a square of six and a half meters by six and a half meters which is for our American guys 21 feet and 4 inches. Now, I love this size because as a fighter, you will be forced to fight. And look at the specially designed walls. There are 45 degree angle, and the fighter can use those walls to his advantage, pushing off, flying kicks all over the place. Now, it's three rounds. Scoring is a 10, plus, must, a 10 point must system, sorry. And we have, of course, our specially designed four ounce gloves with the perfect amount of padding on the knuckles. And Sean, why don't you take us through the rules? In karate combat, punching a grounded fighter is allowed for five seconds. Submissions, knees and elbows are all illegal. And boss, why don't you take the last one? Ooh, is that the blue pill or the red <laughs> pill? In order to be like Keanu Reeves at Matrix. And leg sweeps, by the way, are also, you can sweep the leg. We're now set for the start of our main card, Karate Combat Hollywood in the women's lightweight division. It's the Dejaid Ibrahim of France versus Ana Fajeda of Brazil. You see the numbers? It's our tale of the tape. All right, now, the Ferreira has a nine inch reach disadvantage in her legs, but a two inch reach advantage in her arms. Now, she told us that she lost the punch. Well, then she's going to need to fight inside the reach of her opponent, while her opponent is going to keep her at bay with her longer legs. Here's our pit announcer, prolific actor, renowned fight fan, and machete himself, Danny Trejo. Fighters advance! the red corner, Adalia Ai Sirahim. In the blue corner, Ana Kalea. Fighters, 
Enter the pit. says she has a very strong punch. So let's see if she can do it. As she's there, what uh, Ibrahim was doing, she pushed her off with her leg at the end. So uh, she was thinking while she was receiving ground and pound. Younger sister, Sarah Aid Ibrahim. Karate Combat Olympus in Athens, Greece at the Zapion. There she is. Defeating Fabio Esquivel of Mexico by way of second round TKO. Now the pressure falls on the big sister this evening here in Hollywood, California. Nadej Jaid Ibrahim said that she prides herself on her cardio, her overall fitness. She said, I have a quote, attack only style. Uh, and Nadej, she, she said she started training karate at three. <laughs> three years old. Just out of the diaper. Round two. Still to come, you will see Willian Skidino versus Alexander Buderbon. Man, two models, these guys. Two male models. Alexander Buderbon, victorious in the inaugural karate combat event last year. And then in Miami in April, facing Dionisio Gustavo, finished in the first round. Buderbon said, I've proven to myself that I can come back from adversity. Now I have to prove it to the world in this fight. Yep. So important. Invite only VIP crowd here at the historic Avalon. Located at Hollywood and Vine. Animated in the corner of the day, Shahid Ibrahim. Let's go. And Anna Ferreira. Pitbull is giving her instructions, last minute instructions. The corner people are extremely <laughs> well dressed. This <laughs> the win for Nadei Jaid Ibrahim, matching her sister Sarah, victorious in her karate combat debut. <laughs> Fajeda, the gas tank just simply went to empty, and she could not get back up. There's Ibrahim coming forward, close to this, was a little bit too fast, so she can't use a long arm, but phenomenal job with the takedown. Again, she does the same thing here, takes her down the whole time, very tiring, nice back kick landing there to the midsection, which could have something to do with her running out of gas a little faster. Nice left landed there, and this was the moment that Ferreira said, you know, not anymore, because she dropped backwards and she called it a night. I don't believe Fajeda was really hurt on any one punch. Again, I just think she was simply exhausted from the pace of this fight. You know, and then it's good that they stopped the fight because that's the moment when you get, that's when you get hurt, you know? Because if you can't see the punches coming anymore, your neck muscles are relaxed, you don't go with the punch or you don't brace the punch. When you get connected, that's looking for knockout and damage. Very game from the Brazilian Ana Fajeda. She definitely had her moments, but go back to what Aid Ibrahim said in our fighter meeting. She prides herself on her cardio, her overall fitness. She does CrossFit, and it was really fitness that won this fight. You know, as a fighter, I always say it's the golden rule. You, there is no such thing as having enough stamina in fighting. You can always push it harder. They go like, but how did you get the stamina? Go run some hills. Do, 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 do sprint hills, you know, uh, incline. That will get you in shape. Short ones, 45 seconds, 30 seconds off, 45 seconds. If you do that all the way in the incline up on the treadmill, nine miles an hour, you watch. Try to do 10 rounds of those. Very hard. I know, because I used to do that. Here we go to our pit announcer, Danny Trejo. The winner! 
by a knockout. Nadeja Abraham. All right, let's give him a great big hand. Let's go. Very entertaining fight. Very competitive entering round three. And again, fitness as much as anything was the determining factor. The winner, by way of third round TKO, Nadej Zaid Ibrahim defeats Anna Fajeda. Next, Williams Kidino versus Alexander Buderbond. This is the first fight in karate combat for Buderbond since being knocked out in the opening round by Dinacio Gustavo last April in karate combat in Miami. Buderbond has made it clear that tonight is all about redemption. Ce ring, ce ring spécial, il est très très stressant, mais franchement excitant. Arriver avec les caméras, cette fosse impressionnante, je vous dis que ça fait un peu peur. Je m'appelle Alexandre Bouderban, j'ai 26 ans, je suis actuellement prof de karaté, je suis modèle photo et je suis là pour tout déchirer, pour gagner, vous faire kiffer. Mon premier combat à Budapest, il a été très rapide. Donc avant le combat, j'ai vu la reine et je me suis dit, ça Alex, c'est pour toi. C'est pour toi parce que les caméras autour, les gens qui te regardent, les gens qui te sifflent, les gens qui t'aiment, ça m'a excité. Donc j'ai commencé le combat, je savais pas trop où j'étais, il me saisit, il me retourne. Et là mon cerveau, hop, Alex, c'est maintenant ou alors tu vas mourir. Le karaté combat, c'est vraiment du pied-point plein contact. Donc j'y suis allé, je l'ai tapé toutes mes forces. Et à la fin, j'ai gagné. Je sais le combat, l'arbitre lève la main et là, c'était juste normal. Il y avait ma soeur, il y avait ma chérie. On était tous contents. Je suis pressé de recombattre dans cette arène très, très spéciale. Pour mon prochain combat, je vais me préparer encore mieux pour être encore plus fort, pour être encore plus beau, pour être techniquement au-dessus. Donc, c'est simple, mon gars. Lève la garde haut parce que j'adore taper dans la tête. Alexander Buderbond, boss, really emotional, saying that this is his proving ground tonight. This is his redemption. Well, he's going to have to prove it indeed. You know, I mean, the, th the athleticism of him, when you saw that, I mean, those push-ups coming loose from the ground, he's got all the tools, just has to watch out to not get hit. But hey, guess, it's with everybody. We are now set in the middleweight division. Alexander Buderbond of France versus Williams Kirino of Brazil. You know, the tailor tape is almost identical. So what I'm going to say is this, male model versus male model, you know what, it's what they're going to do? It's a walk-off, Sean, that's what it is. <laughs> Let's see which fighter has the power of Magnum and the other one of Blue Steel. And if you didn't watch the movie Zoolander, you're probably scratching your head right now. Fighters, advance!
in the red corner, Alexander Brudemont. broadcast team tonight is Roxy Diaz. I'm sitting by one of my all-time favorite fighters, Boss Root, and Roxy is with another of my all-time favorite fighters. Yes, Sean, that is correct. I am here with none other than UFC icon legend, Frank Shamrock is in the building. Frank, we're talking between rounds right now. You said you'd like to see the fighters utilize a little bit more time with that five-second rule on the ground, right? Yeah, I mean, once they get down, I'd like to see them hit a little bit more, but I'm for mixed martial arts where we get to do that for a long time, and it's a lot of fun. Also, there's a lot of damage, so <laughs> I'm excited. I love it, but, you know, I'd like a little more on top. What do you think about karate right here in the heart of Hollywood? I've always loved karate, and Chuck Norris trained me back in the day, and he's like one of my, you know, one of my pluses, one of my mentors, so I'm all in, man. Karate all the way. I love it. We'll enjoy the rest of your night. Back to you, Sean. Great stuff, Roxy. Thank you very much. Boss, my dear, dear friend, Art Davey, UFC Hall of Famer, the creator of UFC, told me Frank Schottenrock, he felt, was the first true mixed martial artist he ever signed for the UFC. A you ready? Round Here's two. A complete fight. Fight. Oh, that is what he needed. That was doctor's orders, because the last time when he got stopped, he said he needed a mental coach to get over that knockout. It really had him, but he says, I think I'm okay again, and boy, did he prove it tonight. In our fighter meeting, Alexander Buderbond said to me, I have already proven to myself that I can come back. Now I must show it, show it. Indeed, he did to the world this evening. That is a knockout from the ground and pound position. And it was really set up, if you go back to the previous sequence, as I was talking about the hands being low of Kirino, it was the gorgeous right hand of Buderbond. That swung the fight in his favor all the way to the finish line. Okay, let's take a look at the replays. Boom! That's the first one. It's Suki right on the jaw. And this is the end of the fight. Boom! Oh, man, yeah, I didn't see that one coming. And that, oh, and look at that one. That was just for good measure. One more time. Watch this. Boom! Right on the button. Now watch and that here. head bounce. This one is the hardest shot. Thrown in angle, whiplash on the head. Yeah. But, you know, Corino didn't want to stop. He looked at the referee. No, 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 no. So uh, he's all in, good spirit. Okay, one more time. That's the first one, beautiful. Suki gets him down. First one again, let's take a look at it. Boom! Oh, two of them, first connected, last one full. And it was the end of the fight. He didn't know was definitely arguing, but he ate that final right-handed shot flush the punch bouncing his head off of the canvas I believe a great decision from Mike Bell and that's a great win for Alexander Buderbond clearly though William Skidino who had his moments in this fight very disappointed yeah here's Danny Trejo the winner 132 of the second round by knockout in the red corner, Alexander Buderman. Well, boss, some days you're the hammer, some days you're the nail. <laughs> yeah. Last uh -huh. April in Miami versus Dionisio Gustavo, Alexander Buderman was very much the nail. And tonight, he was very much the hammer. Wow, yep. And, uh... Just hammered his feet in there. You see that backflip? Very impressive. What an athlete, this guy. The winner, by way of second round knockout, Alexander Buderbond defeats Williams really Kidino.
We now move to the lightweight division. Daniel Viveros of Ecuador versus Ilias Marti of France. Viveros has almost a five inch reach advantage in his arms and a one and a half inch reach advantage in his legs. So his opponent, Marty, is going to try to fight close to his opponent. Though he has to watch out for the leg sweep from Viveros because that's his favorite move. Glove tape for Daniel Viveros. Blue glove tape for Elias Marty. He comes in at 21, the youngest fighter on this card. Dare I say the most confident, judging from our fighter interviews. Wayne Spinola's the referee. Yeah, Marty says he's young and relentless. Says that he fights like a wild man, but will use smart counters to stop his opponent. Very confident young man. Started Marty, karate when he was seven, by the way. Marty completely dismissive of the skill set of his opponent, Daniel Viveros, when we spoke two days ago. Yeah, Vivero said that he is opponent's greatest smart fighter, but he will use the pit walls to his advantage. So let's see what he means with that. Vivero said he feels that Marty would do exactly what he's doing right now, sit back and look to counter. And he wants to win this fight with a body shot. He says, I love the body shots. I know, boss, that you love them too. Big takedown. Beautifully done. High up on the waist and yeah. elevating with that takedown. Here we go. No ground to pound the follow. One minute gone, round number one. Switch of stances from the Ecuadorian, Viveros. Viveros, he's shorter than him, but he has a five inch reach advantage in his hands. That's crazy, right? Viveros looking for the front kick. Here comes the ground to pound. That is full on. Huge shots. Wow. Spinola reaches the five count. Oh, he's a little dizzy. He's not stable on his feet right now. You can see Marty. that indeed, Boss Marty, yep. walking back to the center of the pit. Now it's the guy, time to go body head for Viveros. Absolutely nothing on that kick attempt from Marty going low. That's what he was talking about using the ball. Looking for the showtime kick in mm. karate combat. Hey. That kick not getting stop, through. Stop, stop, stop. Fight, yeah, Marty's coach is David Dona. He's a really great karate car himself, who also fought for us in Greece. Unfortunately, he broke his shin bone in his fight. And, uh, well, I had to go to the hospital for that. Donna in the corner of Marty. Donna happy to report, not walking with the limp, said that he will be back soon in the karate combat pit. 
Good on the low kick. That landed hard from Vivetos, yeah. taking Marty off of his line. And immediately following up. I mean, he's following through. You see a lot of karate when they come straight from point karate, don't, don't, they don't do it. But a lot of these guys, they told us they start doing kickboxing as well now on the side because it's full contact. Oh, nice straight punches. Look at that. Spinning back fist, but Marty had already found the exit. Glad the pit is well constructed. That landed flush against the wall. Yeah, Viveros has great distance. That is the end of a very exciting round of the one. Right. Let's take a look at this big shot here. Poof! Oi, oi, oi. Props to Marty for not going out on that one. Look at this. That was a hard shot. Head moved to the side. Wow. Yeah, that's youth. You know, you're young and just overcome that. Great stamina will help as well. Man, looks like Marty has done that more, right? It's fascinating boss in this car. We saw it in Miami, we saw it in Athens, we saw it last September in New York at top of the World Trade Center. How the different fighters approach the five seconds of ground and pound. Some are very cautious, some really go at it. You know, I, if I was them, I would use the walls, like just like Rivera was saying, fight. and I would focus on takedowns and, and ground and pound because not a lot of them are doing it. They're doing it, but not perfect. Good, but you can always make it perfect. Very strong round number one for Daniel Viveros. He's definitely slowing down Elias Marty. Marty was already looking like a counterfighter, even more like a counterfighter, really waiting. That's probably what his coach Davey Donor told him. Just wait for him to come and try to counter on an opening that you see. Bit of flash there from Viveros. Man, he's really he's got great movement, Viveros. Great distance. Look, he's staying just outside the reach of his opponent at all times. Very smart fighter. Probably going to use the wall now in order to do something. Oh, nice. Spinning back hook yeah. kick. Back attempt. Referee breaks it up. Back to the center of the karate combat pit. Switch of stances for Viveros. Interesting striking guard for Viveros. Yeah, Viveros also with that kick. I wonder if he does, does the same thing now, but making the roundhouse kick. Sometimes it's a setup. Make it big so they can see, go for the body, and then suddenly switch it into a roundhouse kick. Like the question mark kicks on the side. 90 seconds remaining round number two. Much slower tempo to this round than we saw to the opening round. And the switches stances from Viveros. Marty's still really trying to find his rhythm, find his tempo. That's the thing. I think the first time in his life, maybe he got hit really hard because he's super confident coming in, like he co completely dismissive of his, of his opponent, but then he got hit, and suddenly we see this version. A little bit more calculated. Low kick inside of the calf lands from Viveros. Nice movement to the side at the moment. Marty has was no, kicking. no interest there, boss, in diving in. Viveros fainted with the up kick, and that was enough to keep the Frenchman back. And it's very low for Marty. I was going to say, Mar uh, Viveros is going to use the, that, uh, the wall. But I think Marty knows now. He doesn't push him further if he's against the wall or in, in the corner, because he knows he's going to use it. 30 seconds now remaining round two. See Marty slapping away the lead hand of Viveros. Viveros switching stances, switching right back to Southpaw from Orthodox. Head kick from Elias Marty. Nice take down. That was pure upper body strength. Two, Just broke it down. Big shots there, even a hammer fist. Reverse hammer fist from Marty. That was the first time I saw that. That was cool. Not sure if he planned it or if it worked out that way, but indeed, a reverse hammer fist. We are heading to the third and final round. I like also his head movement from Marty at the end. He started using more head movement. We don't see that a lot. Yet. Ooh, 
Abdullah Ibrahim versus Kevin Walker. That's a fight I'm really looking forward to. Last April in Miami, Ibrahim recorded a devastating first round knockout versus Bellator veteran Josh Quayhagen with that big left hand. And he's looking for another big left hook. That was his biggest wish. He said, if I could have a wish to win tomorrow, I want it to be the left hook again. The Mawashi Tsuki, as they call it. We're at the historic Avalon, Los Angeles, California. Hollywood and Vine, Karate Combat Hollywood. Here we go. Fight. Round three. Fight. Third and final round. Daniel Viveros of Ecuador versus Ilias Marti of France. Got a combat debut for both fighters. Oh. Big head kick lands from Viveros. Fight. Vettos continually boss switching stances back to Southpaw. Yeah, he's a super explosive fighter, but so is his opponent, Marty. Marty needs to turn it up though with this round. Preferably, let's go, guys. Come on, let's go. don't let it go to the judges because he might be behind. Be behind. For all of Marty's talk about being reckless, being wild, letting things go, he's been a very cautious fighter, especially since he was dropped in round one. Yeah, but that's what Mike Tyson said, right? Everybody has a game plan until they get hit. Ooh, that was Good left hand thing. by Mardi. And the left hook flash knocked down on Vivetos. Yeah, that, 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 that right hand before, I believe it landed as well. Fight. Starting to find the target. And Spinola keeping this fight moving along. Again, Spinola and Bella have been fantastic, the two referees. Swing and a miss from Mardi. Viveros in our fighter meeting boss talked about controlling the tempo, controlling the rhythm. I think by and large he's done that. Working, thus far. Guys, he's working. Yep. Let's go. His game plan is working. Nice little hook kick there. Big to swing the and a miss from Viveros. Rare moment of wildness for him in this fight. Right. Yeah, but Marty, that crazy kick that he did to the calf that lands with a with a heel. That's how the only one I saw ever do that was the great and late Andy Hook when he made a spinning back into Mike Bernardo's thigh, which was already beaten up by Peter Ertz, and then he stopped him, won the show. Look at these guys going at each other. To the final minute we go of this lightweight bout. Marty has started to find his punching range a bit here in this third and final round. I say final with the asterisk. That if it's level, if it's a draw on the three California judges' scorecards after the three rounds of nine minutes, we will have an additional three minute overtime round to determine the winner. Oh! Counter right hand, then the left, a right hand right back from Vivetos after Marty landed. Keep working, guys, let's go. Wow, Viveros. Almost there. Missed, then Marty connected, and then Viveros connected. Swelling under the right eye of Vivetos. One, two from Daniel Viveros. He's missing with the head kick, swinging big. Swelling under both eyes on the face of the Ecuador. Oh, oh, down goes oh, Viveros oh, again. Hey. The bell and the end of the fight. I believe Viveros, I would think he won, and if it's not, it's going to go to the third round. Then the referees think it's very close. Great sportsmanship. This is why you know I was talking about it yesterday in the interviews, you know? This is what I like. At the weigh-ins, they get a little lippy to each other. They get right in their face. As soon as they separate, they bow to each other out of respect. I love it, man. You can't see that in any other sport. Take a look at some highlights. Oh, look at that beautiful roundhouse kick. Oh, a nice punch that landed. And again, just steamboating straight through his opponent. Look at that inside kick. I love that. Great distance moving out of the reach of his opponent. Very well done by Viveros. Is it still taking time? Because that could mean, right, that there could be an overround. Uh, extra round. 
Huh. Boss, in my experience, is a proud member of the Kansas Athletic Commission. Usually when you have a delay, it means that it's something other than a unanimous decision. That's what I'm saying. So the Spectre now, and over time, an extra time round is looming. Both fighters, as you see, pacing nervously around the pit. Inside of three rounds and nine minutes, we will not have an overtime round. Let's go to Danny Trejo. Winner in the blue corner, it's a split decision. Okay. Elias Party. I gotta be honest, I didn't think so. There's some disquiet in the crowd and you see elation from Marty. And just a look of absolute dismay on the face of Daniel Viveros. Yeah. I mean, he connected with the big shots, landed high kick, I mean, takedowns, round and pound. Oh well. They'll fight another day. Again, we knew it wasn't going to be unanimous. It's going to be a split or a majority or even a draw sending us to the overtime round. A little Conor McGregor walk he did there. Freaking Connors, even touching karate. Elation I love it. for the 21-year-old Ilias Mardi in victory. The winner by way of split decision, Ilias Mardi defeats Daniel Vivanos. It is a jam-packed and electric VIP invite-only crowd here at the historic Avalon in Los Angeles, California with the Grace Boss Root, and I'm Sean Wheelock. So glad that you're with us watching around the world Karate Combat Hollywood. Tonight, Fighters Genetic Profiles are presented by Origin. From fitness to nutrition to personality, Origin's DNA tests help you get the info you need to make the best choices for you. Look at that gifted, gifted noble. Wow, I love that stuff. With me, it has looks, it says gifted underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Swear. We are now set to do the numbers in the middleweight division. Abdullah Ibrahim versus Kevin Walker. It is our tail of the tape. Yeah, what jumps out here is the height, arm, and leg reach advantage that Walker has. That means that Ibrahim probably will try to fight inside the reach of Walker. He has to watch out for the sweeps of his opponent, though, since that's Walker's favorite technique, as you can see.
in the red corner, Abdallah Ibrahim. In the blue corner, Ken Walker. Fires enter the pit. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. Bow. You ready? You ready? Fight! Fighter, fight! All right, now Kevin Walker, the piano playing karate guy, told us that he will be unpredictable and he's looking forward to stalking his opponent and showing the people at home what karate is all about. But Ibrahim has power in his hand and he told us that he can control his mind very well and that if he had a choice, I already mentioned this, he would love to win with a left hook. There's the left hook already. Greg Love Tay from Abdullah Ibrahim from Egypt, moved to the United States 2017. Luke Love Tate for the American Kevin Walker. Fast start for Ibrahim. Coming out swinging, lands a big right hand. You see Walker covering up, high tight striking guard. And even trying to high kick him it, while he was in clinch position. Did you see that? Walker said, and he used this word, out point. I want to stay long, I want to outpoint, I want to frustrate Abdullah Ibrahim. Yeah. Big shot from Ibrahim. Jackhammer shots, and that is it! The protest from Walker, oh the no. jackhammer ground and pound, and the win just like that for Abdullah Ibrahim. Wow. That was fast. Just when I looked down at my notes, I'm looking up, and it dropped. Was it the left hook shot? You'll see the strikes coming. But what finished it, boss, was the ground to pound and the right hand getting through at the end. Walker immediately protesting the referee, Mike Bell. But what Bell saw were clean, unfettered shots. Walker just turtling up. That's the thing, yep. And here we have the finish. Boom, nice right high kick. Oh, yeah, yeah, beautifully done. Well, you know, he wanted to win with a left hook, but I think setting it up with the with Mawashi Yodan a Geary, that's a high kick, a roundhouse kick to the head, and then wrapping it up at ground and pound. Oh, he'll take it. He's happy. Bell stopped that fight because, as you see, Walker just turtling up that's on his left hip, and those were jackhammer rights going into the temple of Walker. Yeah, and once you don't look at your opponent, that's you're not intelligently defending yourself. That's the rule, the sentence that they use here, the phrase. 100%. And if you don't do that, they will stop the fight. Intelligently defending, you cannot turtle up. Even though it's only five seconds, a lot of damage can be caused and indeed created in five seconds. Simply too much from Dali Ibrahim, starting Bosh. with that right rear head kick. Beautifully done and great ground upon. Look at those jackhammers coming down. Beautiful. Love it. What a timing. Ibrahim has been cross training heavily in Muay Thai, and he put a little bit of shin. Not foot, but a little bit of shin into that head kick. Sweet. That is a statement win for Abdullah Ibrahim. In April, he took out Josh Quayhagen in round number one. Tonight, here in Hollywood, California, he takes out Kevin Walker in round number one. Very quickly, I think, as we move forward with this outstanding karate combat rule set, boss, fighters will learn, even if they have no MMA or ground fighting experience, you can't just turtle for five seconds. You have to try to throw up your arms, shrimp, posture, do something on the bottom. You know what the, the referees, I've been at many referee meetings, and you've been there too, they will tell you three times. They say you have to defend yourself, look at your opponent, because if you turn away, you don't intelligently defend yourself, we're gonna stop the fight, so they know. Here's Danny Trejo. By a knockout in the first round, one minute, yeah, um, Della Ibrahim. Huge performance, fast start, faster finish for the Egyptian now based in the United States, Abdallah Ibrahim.
He's such a pleasure to interview, to talk to. He always has a smile on his face. He's the nicest guy you will ever meet. And he turns it on once he steps in there. He's completely relaxed. And that's one of his powers, he says. Roxy Diaz is with the victor. Sean, thank you so much. Abdallah, I think that your walk into the ring, to the pit, was a lot longer than that fight. Did you think you were going to finish him so fast? Yeah, I was uh, confident. I got really ready for that fight. And I knew I would do like something big in that fight. Whatever, whoever my uh, opponent is, it would be the same end like this fight. You told our announcers, you told Sean before the, the fight that you wanted your left hook to actually win you the victory, but it ended up being a right roundhouse kick. Were you still satisfied with how it ended up? Yeah, but it was good, right? Like <laughs> yeah. even the left hook or the side kick, like both are good. It was in the spot like the last fight. What is it like fighting right here in the heart of Hollywood? Sorry, say again? What is it like fighting here? You're fighting karate right here in the heart of Hollywood. Uh, it's, it's so big. I know, like, uh, the one in Miami, was, the event was really good. And the one in New York in the World Trade Center was really, like, bigger than this one. And I knew this one would, it would be one of the best events that Karate Combat have ever. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. Back to you, Sean. Roxy, thank you. With emphasis, the winner by way of first round TKO, Abdullah Ibrahim defeats Kevin Walker. Setting out for a bout in the light heavyweight division. Igor de Castaneda of Spain versus Milos Vukovic of Serbia. Boss, you see the numbers. Oh, yes, over a four inch reach advantage for Vukovic in his arms and almost three inch reach advantage in the legs for Castaneda. That translates to Castaneda wanting to fight outside the leg reach and Vukovic wants to close the distance so he can use his arms. Man, I'm really looking forward to these two. They've got different styles. Uh, and we just have to figure out tonight who's got the best pit control. I always want to say cage control, but now it's the pit. And, and you see it a lot now. You, when people go to the corner, they already know the corners behind them or the wall, and they're moving to the side. So let's see what these guys are going to do tonight. Fighters advance! Okay, 
Boom, hey, and that is probably the moment that the cut started opening up. Yes, you can see it trickling down, you see? Wow, nice high kick. But then Castaneda came back with his hand strikes, and he did a, a lot of damage with that. They balanced out, and then the fight went to a little slower pace. Milos Vukovic meditates daily. Talk to us as much about his mental preparation for this fight as his physical preparation. And he said that he felt mentally ready for victory. Ready? There you go. Fight. Yeah, he really Round wants to knock out in his first victory. That's what. A lot of celebrities here. Boss, did I ever tell you I love Karate Kid? I think I do. Roxy Diaz is going to confirm my love of the Karate Kid. Oh. Okay. That's right, Sean. If you love Karate Kid, then you definitely love Mr. Martin Cove because he is the one that is keeping Cobra Kai alive. And you said that if your students were out there in the pit right now, there would be a lot more leg kick swinging action going on, right? Well, I think sweep the leg. I mean, I'm <laughs> watching so many sweeps, sweeps of the leg, and none of them do it as well as my Cobra Kai boys. They just don't. Billy Zapka does a great sweep the leg. And you know, in the movies, but we do it now. And uh, you know, John Hurwitz and 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 um, and uh, Josh Heal, they're here, the writers of the show. We've been living, eating, and breathing the show, especially they have because they're editing everything. But we just did ten episodes, and it's all about it's all about instruction. It's all about getting as good as these guys, and the training. To me, the training is the best part. Well, we'll see if this training is going to live up to it right now. Sean back. All right, let's take a look at some replays because we, oh, look at that, all over the place. Super entertaining, it was the early of the fight. Man, these guys were going landing back and forth shots. That was so cool, the Castaneda came back from that high kick. And then again, you saw Vukovic coming back, and not a low kick there, but Castaneda, and again, Vukovic is taking over. Man, this is a nightmare to score this fight. Look at his nice straight punches. I believe that was the last round. And then Vukovic landing that punch, but Castaneda coming back with another right. Wow, that was crazy. In these moments, I'm always happy that I'm not a judge, because this is a hard one to judge. This actually might go to a final round, an extra round, I have to say. I would love to see the overtime rounds. Yeah. Because then we're going to really find out what they're made of, because both of these guys are exhausted right now. There's Vukovic, loves to meditate, sits in the meditating position there. Indeed he is. Yep. Extremely hard fought. There we have Castaneda. Vukovic, really clear-eyed in his assessment of Igor de Castaneda coming in. Really had a lot of respect for de Castaneda's power. But again, felt that his fitness just might be the determining factor of Vukovic who does indeed get the win. I think it is from his fitness. You know what, Castaneda, he was tired, but he's got great heart because he was never out of the fight. Every time you thought, oh, it's over now, he came back. Hard fought, competitive to end all suspense. Here's Machete himself, Danny Trejo. Winner by unanimous decision. Blue corner, Milos Vukovic! Boss, you know it as well as anybody in fighting. You were always supremely fit. You can never discount fighter fitness. That's it. You know, it helps with everything, with technique, with speed, but also with taking hits. And that's so important, recouping. If you're tired to get hit and you go down, it takes a long time to come back from that. But if you're in shape, you recoup faster. Really a fun fight. De Castaneda had his moments. Vukovic had his moments. De Castaneda started strong. The cut opened up. It wasn't just the fitness, though, on Vukovic. A lot of good, clean striking technique. He did, and he mixed it up more. He had more leg attacks as well. And his opponent primarily was focusing on hand strikes. He threw in little sweeps here and there to distract the opponent, to set up the hand strikes. But that was his main focus. 
Power and speed can disappear so quickly when energy disappears. You see, and that's why I always wanted to be Wolverine. <laughs> because he's recouping <laughs> while he's fighting. <laughs> you don't get tired. How good would that be? Very entertaining in the light heavyweight division. Both fighters absolutely throwing down, going extremely hard over the full three rounds, the full nine minutes. Roxy Diaz is with the winner. Sean, thank you so much. Milos, once again, congratulations on such an amazing fight. Our announcer boss was crediting it to your stamina, your endurance. You were in good shape. Were you recouping while you were taking some of those blows? Uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to fight here in Hollywood with Igor. Igor is an amazing fighter. This was uh, harder than I expected, but I'm glad I win. Yeah. Yeah, I see that you're still trying to recuperate right now. Please hold on to the rail. I'm not going to torture you anymore. Boss and Sean, right back up to you. Rosie, thank yeah, you very thank much. You. Boss, we put over his fitness. He could barely get a word out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he didn't show it there. You know, that's what they call a poker face. Exhausted and victorious, draped in the flag of his native Serbia. Hard fought indeed. The winner by way of unanimous decision, Milos Vukovic defeats Igor de Castaneda. reached our co-main event of the evening and our fighters genetic profiles are presented by origin from fitness to nutrition to personality origins dna tests help you get the info you need to make the best choices for you and look at there blank magic el haji endure i mean gifted in movement power performance is normal and we're gifted again in muscle strength and caleb rub movement gifted which i could say before power performance is normal and the muscle strength is normal but i think his head and the head space where he's in is really good as well so he might be more technical el haji endure feels that he has possessed the fighter's heart since his early childhood in senegal i was born in a country that we we all fight in Senegal, we don't have like a weapon. The police can drive, see you guys fighting. If there's no weapon, they're gonna drop the window down and say, guys, good luck. I wake up early in the morning, I go to work. I feel like I'm practicing some fight because it's all about strategy of using your strength, you know, using your power you have. I feel like I'm doing karate there. After work, I come to the dojo and teach karate. Then when I finish, I train. For me, I always gonna push myself harder than last training. That is me. I learned that karate is all about respect, discipline, get done what need to get done, and have a courage by taking hit and keep moving forward. I got so many disqualification by knocking people out in the semi-contact karate. And I hate to lose. The other style, I feel like there was a limit. And this one, I feel like there's not a limit. And I don't want to limit myself. I feel like free. Yeah! Any fighter underestimate me, that's going to be your problem. They're not going to be happy and their family are not going to be happy. Because you're going to get knocked out for it. People have right to choose whatever they choose. Fear is a choice. That is just make me who I am today. I'm a fearless. Have zero fear for no one. Okay, well, Al Haji uh, Endure, aka Black Magic, believes that because he fought already a few times in the pit, that will work to his advantage. He says that he will put pressure on his opponent, wait for a mistake, and then knock him out. Endure's opponent in this co main event, Callum Robb, has a completely separate life from fighting, working as a scientist with a PhD in comparative immunology. My entire life, I've been fascinated by the creatures that lie deep 
within these rock pools. I've got a mind that likes to take things apart, understand how they function. My research, I'm interested in marine creatures and cell defence and how they defend themselves from infection and other predators. I am interested in how cells attack predators and that comes across in my fighting style. I'm all about the attack. I will systematically hunt down and destroy any invading predators. Sometimes, no matter what we do, the universe surprises us. No matter how much we learn, the primal warrior always surfaces. My bloodline can be traced back some 2,000 years ago to the Scottish Picts, the first warriors to inhabit Scotland. I'm going to use my mind to my advantage, science. I'm coming at fighting from a different angle. Because at the end of the day, fighting's in my head, in my heart, and in my blood, and that makes me a triple threat. No matter how much I study, or how much I learn, the primal Scottish warrior always remains. 18 Scottish titles, 17 British titles, 20 European and two world titles. Do I need to say anything more? He's also the very first fighter who's taller than his opponent, Black Magic, and he told us that he will use that reach advantage to his favor. Now, here we have the tail of the tape. Everything is almost identical. The only difference is that Rob told us that he likes straight punches and Black Magic uses hooks. And since straight punches are longer than hooks, it's all about who can land it first. Our tale of the tape is presented by Clearweather Shoes, less corporate, more independent. Fighters advance! This has all of the ingredients to be a really fun fight. Red glove tape for El Haji Endur from Senegal, now living in the United States. Blue glove tape for the PhD in comparative immunology, Dr. Callum Ra. How cool is that if they can put the word doctor in front of him? Rob told us he's been working extensively, training Muay Thai, really favors the front teeth kick. Plans on using it to full effect. Wow. Long straight punches from Endure. And we didn't expect that because in his previous fights he was throwing hooks. So I think he studied his opponent and knows that straight punches are working better against a taller opponent. So the spinning back kick to flash from El Haji Endure. Rob said that Endure is a real front runner, intimidates his opponents, has never really faced adversity. He wanted to put him under immediate pressure. Instead, it's a fast start for Endure. Oh, connected there with the right. Rob has to watch out, but not leaning backwards on head strikes because the body might be the second attack from Endure. Hands much higher for Rob. A traditional karate stance for Endure as he lands that rear head kick. And the right hand. 
Endure opening up with his punches. Oh, good left hand. That was a nice one. Right on the jaw, perfectly timed. Nice front kick. One minute, 20 seconds remaining, round number one. Good rear body kick from Rob. He should throw a big, long left two from the Marshy Chupi, as they call it, and an underneath kick with the left to the body. Stop! It's a nice Stop. way to break. open up. Break. There's the, the break body. from Mike Bell. Asked for and given. Respect definitely flowing both directions between these two fighters. Side kick from Endure. Not yet seen the teep that Rob has talked so much about. No. Swings. Trying to counter. Not getting through those long arms of El Haji Endur. Nice left to blend it again by Endur. Switch of stances from Endur. Endur has that style where other fighters look at him and they say he's all arm punches, but he has real power. Oh, he does. And he's got great kicks. You know, he's, he's a complete fighter. And I really like what I'm seeing right now because I think when we were in New York, he was throwing wild round punches, hooks. And here, he started with straight punches. So he really definitely polished up his game. Much straighter indeed, boss for El Haji Endur here in the opening round. Our co-main event, El Haji Endur versus Callum Robb. We are headed to round two. Elas, oui, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. 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 Thank you body and then fake the body head play with your, use your karate you side you side kick round kick to the body then the head just like you did in the warm up all right don't trade with them don't trade with them okay let's go, let's go. Let's go. Okay, back up, back up. round two fight fight into round number two Boss, you heard the corner talking to Callum Robb. Do you agree with that assessment? Yes, I do. I do. But um, I would have told him that he, you know, has to watch out because he might have lost that much. Just to keep him a little sharp. Be sure and go online to karate.com and download our apps. Where you can access all of our fights and watch exclusive videos and content. You can also check out our interactive heads-up display Karate.com and the Karate.com app. And that's where you see it right now. You see the heart rate. The kicks landed, the punches landed. Man, I love this. The punch speed. How cool is that? It's like playing a video game. Rob trying to hold center of the pit. Big body kick. Rob tried to answer, but endure first. More effective side kick from Callum Rob. Rob talked to us also about, in our fighter meeting two days ago, boss, not being one strike at a time, which he said he did as a point fighter. He's starting to fall into that rhythm. It's Endure putting his strikes more together. That's the thing. He should start doing it then, you know? Tie it more together. What I also like to see, what you don't see a lot yet, is hand strikes combined with leg kicks, or with, with kicks in general. The opening. Across the halfway line of our co-main event. It's more methodical now from El Haji Endur after a very effective round number one. Body kick not getting through. Yeah, and it was nicely blocked with the lower part. There, that I, I think he felt that, and if he doesn't feel it now, he's going to feel it tomorrow. Side kick from Endur, not much on it. He's trying to take Rob off of his striking line. Yep. Nice job there. Oh, taking out the leg. Why not? And then following no, up. No interest in following up. I guess El Haji Endur perhaps feels that he's dominating on the feet. Why take it to the ground? Why not five seconds extra raining down punches? <laughs> it's there. You know me. I'm all about ground and pound. Yeah. I say dive in. Yeah. 
Counter on the left from Rob. Frustration setting in on Callum Robb. Ohaji Endure definitely getting this fight in his tempo and range. We're heading to the third and final round. All the oxygen in, all the oxygen in, all the oxygen in. Listen to me, forget about fucking boxing. You, you've got range on him, so working with that kick, the low kick, okay? Body kick, head kick, mix up the levels. Use your side kick. You're tenfold better, but mate, this round you've got to really, really work. But show your karate. Fuck the boxing. Don't fight him. Karate. Use the kick mate. It's all day long. Everything's landed. It's going to be fucking hard work, right? But you're fitter than him. He's standing. He planted. Yeah? Don't get too close. Use the legs. Get the shit out of the karate, mate. Yeah? Take a drink. Take a drink. Take a drink. You run it, low, body, head, mix it up, man. Teeth and fake. Fake the teeth, go. Karate, karate, karate. Work great, Callum, work great. Karate. Back up, back up. Final round, round guys, final three. round. Fight! Boss, I talked about the frustration from Callum Robb. You could really hear the frustration in his corner. Yeah, he's not performing like he should perform, you know? The, the combination you were talking about, you know, it's, it, that is, once you put him under pressure, it's a different setting. It's you go back to your old self. That's what's happening right now. And against a guy like Al Haji, yeah, that's a mistake. You need to throw combinations action. to make him stop attacking you. Al Haji endure extremely confident coming to this fight. He said, I'm quote, fearless. I always have been. That gives me a huge advantage in every fight that I'm in. He had a fearless start to this bout. Really settled into his rhythm. Nothing decided yet. Better stuff from Rob on the inside, but then it's Endure firing right back. Cross hook, he did a great job with that. And another one over the top there. His right hand the whole time. Hook cross, he loves it all. One minute gone, third and final round. And you see, he throws once and he stops. Rob does. He needs to continue, press forward. Rear cheap kick from Endure. Faint from Rob. Just marking Throw with feints here and there. Even faint takedowns. You know, bring those hands down. Then come over the top of the strike. It's finding a plan B, boss. That's it. See the supreme confidence now in the movement El Haji Endure. The spacing, the positioning, just angling off of that left hand. Yeah, he's looking for a big counter. There was the teak from Rob, but nothing behind it with the hands. Good hands from Endure. Again, those look like arm punches, but clearly they don't feel like arm punches. No, when you're the receiver, it's always different. And especially when you're already in the fight a few ways. Rob's nose bloodied up. Closing stages of our co-main event in the heavyweight division. Nothing there. Yeah, he came through, but he shoot through that low as a distraction, and right away come on top and strikes. It's almost like uh, Black Magic is beating him to the punch. Standing back kick from Endure. Right hand and the left. Endure uses his range so well inside the pit. We saw it in Miami, we saw it in New York, we're seeing it here tonight in Hollywood, California. High kick there, but it missed. But again, that's almost like it's the point karate. It's almost like he pulled that kick, you see? Final seconds now. Swing and a miss from Rob. Early celebration from El Haji Endure. I doubt it's premature. That was a strong performance. All right, let's take a look at some beautiful highlights because we had some great moments in this fight. 
Hope connecting with the right there. Endure again, again the left hook landed on top. Nice right high kick with a short left. Wow. Yeah, this is round number one, super fresh, and I really was surprised by him using straight punches. Very good job there by Black Magic. Endure never seems to expend that much energy. He sits on the outside, he snaps those long range punches, never really seems to hip in, yet they land effectively. You can tell because they always take the opponents off of their striking line. Yeah, he did a great job, but I hope they're gonna look back at these fights, you know, and see when they're leaning back on head strikes, follow up with body strikes. If your opponent leaning backwards, I mean, a shot to the solar plexus, lip or spleen, it doesn't really matter because it's hyper extend the body, it will have an effect. We await the tallying of the three California judges scorecards. Yeah, and, we're, and again, we're talking, you were talking about this before, but it takes a long time, something weird might be happening, right? Although tough to see in this fight. This feels like a 30-27 across the board. Uh, listen, the, the last fight, I, uh, I thought the same thing. <laughs> That's what we thought. Yep. Tonight's fights are regulated by the California State Athletic Commission and sanctioned by ISKA. To learn the winner, again, Danny Trejo. Unanimous decision, red corner, El Haji Endure. Sometimes, boss, and I've said it many a commission table, you see the tens and nines, it looks easy. It just takes time to add up. Okay, I get that. They didn't pay attention to the map. <laughs> all tens for Endure, all nines for Callum Robb. A very strong performance, and the fighter known as Black Magic just keeps on rolling. The winner, by way of unanimous decision in our co main event of the evening, El Haji Endure defeats Callum Robb. Counting down to our main event of the evening, fight nine of nine here, Karate Combat Hollywood from the historic Avalon Jam Pack tonight. A VIP invite only crowd. And on tap, they will see in the lightweight division, Luis Hocha versus Mirzak Tebuyev. Boss, this is a really intriguing main event. We've seen both fighters in the karate combat pit. Both have legitimate one-punch knockout power. Yes, um, I, we are gonna have to see. I mean, uh, Tibuev last time knocked his opponent out, probably the fastest time here at karate combat. But Hocha, I mean, this guy is super explosive. He will be in his face as well. Can Tibuev use his reach advantage that he has? Can he move and circle out after every combination? Because he can never plant his feet, because he will. If he does blend his feet, that could be night-night for him. And talking about using the karate combat pit, Hocha talked about using it offensively, using it for the attack. Tebuyev, who's a PhD like Callum Robb, he's an engineer, talked about using it tactically, using it defensively, 
using the walls to angle out being the smart counter fighter, whereas Hocha wants to be the really fierce attacking fighter. You know, it's all about these guys. What did they learn in the last fight and what they're going to bring? You know, every time when you fight, you're going to go like, hey, man, maybe I should use the walls a little bit more. Maybe I should use this a little bit more, a little bit more of that. All of them, they started training also in kickboxing because they realized after they fought a few times, mm, I'm used to pulling my punches. I'm going to have to fight destroying my opponent going in there. Also, we talked about one-punch attacks. That's what you see in karate. Yeah, it makes sense, and they stop. That we saw tonight as well, but then other fighters who started training in kickboxing, they start throwing combination, and once you do that, and both these guys that we have right now are doing it, that's gonna be a great fight. Boss, this is going to be something special. A really intriguing co-main event on tap. Time now for our fighter genetic profiles. They're presented by Origin. From fitness to nutrition to personality, Origins DNA tests help you get the info you need to make the best choices. For yeah, you. and they, they, they go all over everything in the body. They say your movement. Okay, let's look at Roach Hocha. Your movement, he's gifted. They just compare it to everybody in the world, and he's gifted in movement. Power performance, he's gifted again. Muscle strength, he's normal like a normal person. Then you look at uh, Tebuev, Tebuev. Movement also gifted, but a lot of gifted here it, with the, all these fighters. Power performance, muscle strength, also normal. So if you look at both of them, they're identical. Look, they're literally identical fighters. Now it's all about who can control the mind the best and who has the best game plan. The winner of this bout will then fight for the inaugural Karate Combat Golden Belt in the lightweight division. That will be this April in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Woo. So, so much at stake. Karate Combat in 2019 is going to start awarding championship belts, golden belts in the four weight classes. 14 or 18 karat gold belts. <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> I would love to, oh man, if I could still compete, you know, if I didn't have my arm problem, I would make you do, you do against an older person. I'm not gonna, I'm not, <laughs> uh, not uh, for, 35 years and up, I do. I'm not gonna go against these young guns, 25 years old, who have endless amount of stamina because that's gonna be a, a long night for me, I think. Leg locks. Le oh, yeah, I know, you know, unfortunately, they're not uh, <laughs> legal in this world, but you know what? If I feel that I'm losing, oh yeah, I'll, I'll rather get the score. Right. Put him in a choke, don't choke him out, really nice and gentle. At the beginning of our broadcast, you talked about the tenacity of Hocha fighting through injury, fighting through adversity. You know, that's the thing. I mean, I had a tear in my li ligament, right? It's a double ligament tear, and then still coming back from that, and then almost winning the fight. That is impressive to me. Look at that. And this was it. You, I mean, you didn't notice a thing that he had a double ligament tear, you see? And there, it's at the end, but he's... Uh, there was a moment like that before, when they wanted to stop the fight, but he said no, and then he kept fighting. Hocha then coming back, Karate Combat atop the World Trade Center in New York last September. He defeated Dimitrios Tria, Tria, uh, Triantafilis. I said it so well in New York, I just tanked it there. It's Dimitrios Triantafilis by way of second round TKO to earn this fight this evening. So we are now set. It is our main event of the evening in the lightweight division. Luis Hocha versus Mirza Tebuyev. You see our tale of the tape. It is presented by Clear Weather Shoes, less corporate, more independent. Well, as you can see, Tibuev is about three inch taller and has almost a four inch reach advantage in his arms I was talking about. So expect him to keep the fight outside the reach of his opponent, while Rocha will come forward and will try to close the distance and do damage from there. And Fighters! This is the main event of the evening! Fighters and fans!
Fighters, round one, fight! Our main event is underway. The Brazilian Luis Hocha red glove tape, the Russian. Here's a Tebuyev blue glove tape. Dr. Mirza Tebuyev is our second PhD on the night, along with Callum Robb. Tebuyev has a PhD in technical studies. He works as an electrical systems engineer. Boss, I've commentated about 3,500 fights across all combat sports. The only other PhD I've ever commentated, Rosie Sexton, the now retired English go, female MMA fighter, fought in Bellator and UFC. That's one PhD. We have two PhDs on this card. Uh, doctors. Hocha, four and one is his pro MMA record, including one and oh in Bellator. Trains with the Pitbull brothers, the current Bellator featherweight champion, Patricio Pitbull. And the Bellator lightweight fighter, Patricky Pitbull. The fighters go their go way around go. ground and pound. Oof, that was a fast kick. Really fast kick from Tebuya to the inside. Looking for the takedown. Stand up immediately from Wayne Spinola. Stands that means one is a southpaw stands, the other one orthodox. Most of the time, you see inside low kicks, which uh, you have to watch out for here because you can't hit the thigh, you can hit below the knee, but that's when you hit another shin bone. You should watch out, as Davy Donna found out in Greece. See Hocha trying to bait Tebuyev and keeping his lead left hand low, but cocking back high and tight on the chin, the right hand. Swing and a miss from Tebuyev from the southpaw stands. Come on, guys, let's go. Spinola calling for action. Yeah, the pit bull there is really, he really wants to counter strike. He's waiting for his opponent to attack so he can find an opening and capitalize on that. Rocha looking very calm, sitting back. Tebuyev having a tough time finding his way in. Tebuyev said lots of combos in our fighter meeting. He said, I need to put my punches together. He said, Hoch has power, but I feel he's one strike at a time. Feet from Tebuya. 40 seconds now remaining round number one. Well, that crazy right high kick. You know, and look how powerful it is from Hoch. I mean, the first one he threw to the head, that was so fast. It's a Muay Thai style kick to the body. That was all shin. Wow. Big shots in his short right hand. Tebuya comes inside and the takedown. No follow-up there at Tebuyev. Curious from the Russian. Wanting to keep this fight standing, not venturing to the ground. Ten seconds. Good body kick from Tebuyev. Oh, that kick, that's the end of round one. All right, boom! That was that heavy roundhouse kick to the body. Mawashi Shunangiri is what they call it. Boom, that strikes very powerful back and forth, back into the place. Man, some of these strikes, if they would have landed like a, an inch higher, <laughs> they could have been night-night. Very good. Round two, fight! Here we go, fight! But fighters quickly to the center of the pit. Miss from the southpaw stands for Tebuyev. Oh, you talked about aggression. Right now he's being an aggressive counter striker. You saw with that lead left hook on the counter. And also really nice how he angled away from the attack of Tebuyev. Give him a little smirk there. Yeah, I did that nice. Ocha with a traditional karate background, but you can definitely see the Muay Thai and the MMA influences. Oh, yeah. He's super comfortable. Look at that again. You know, we just talked about it. The, 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 the Pitbull brothers, if you have to train with those guys, you're going to be ready for a fight. Frank Shamrock is, of course, here, yourself, boss. In the 90s, you're part of that first generation that embraced cross-training. 
that was the thing, you know. I found out that you just excel at two uh, arts in mixed martial arts, preferably three, but wrestling was never been my real forte because we simply don't have it in all. Yeah. But then it works, and that's what you see here now, karate combat. Every time they come back with a new, uh, new tools on the belt, so to say. You know, using the wall, using ground and pound, using takedowns. More combinations instead of simple strikes. That was a nice combination. Three, two, one, up, stop. It's more of a balanced thing, though, by Hocha. That's why he fell, fell down. Reminder that tonight's event, a full replay and additional content available on karate.com. We remind you to download the Karate Combat, karate.com mobile app. A minute 20 seconds, I'm getting the timing down in the final fight of the night with this reverse countdown clock remaining in round number two. That took only two hours. <laughs> work, let's go. <laughs> We can't all have PhDs and work as electrical systems engineers. So we just have to talk about people getting punched in the head for a living. Clean Better separate. to talk about than actually receiving <laughs> it. The receiving it. There's a little less. Clean separation from Spinola. Tebuya being methodical, but then landing the powerful head kick. Big shot right back from Hocha. I love it. Roundhouse kick to the body. Across all combat Very sports, clear. boss, you hear fighters talk about being an aggressive right. counter striker. Right now, Hocha is being the quintessential aggressive counter striker. That's what he is, yep. And he's starting to mix it up. Sometimes he attacks to it like he's just doing there. So it's not only waiting, which is always the best thing to do. You want to have, a, as El Wapen would say, a plethora of techniques. Late now in round number two. Hocha picking his spots and finding his spots. This, to me, Time. could be a fight that's going to go to an overall. Round number three heading our way. All right. Let me see. Boom. That's nicely done. Left hook is circling out, and that's where he gives the little smirk. I was talking about. But Tebuyev said, I can do that too. Anything you can do, I can do better. That's what he thought. Well, but in Russian. I learned a little bit of Russian. <laughs> he was a little bit of Russian. He was Here we go, gentlemen. Fight! Round three, fight! I do want to note again, boss, I've never seen better dressed corner people in my life. Again, right, in suits. Third. Oh, it's a stretchy suit. And possibly the final round, there's a slip from Tebuyev. Axe kick coming in from Hocha. Wow. I like that. That's the first time we saw it here at the Karate Combat, the next kick while the opponent's on the ground. Boss, you were talking about the end of round two. Could we have our first of the night extra time, overtime round? Not much thus far between Hoch and Tebuyev in our main event. Again, the stakes that much higher. The winner of this bout will then advance to fight for the inaugural Karate Combat Golden Belt in the lightweight division this April. In the Karate Combat Pit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. See the feint from Hocha. Yeah, both guys have really great distance. That's why they hit a lot of air. Because they stay just outside the reach of their opponent. To me, that is always, you know, th that shows technique. It's a very hard thing to control on, once go. you're fighting, especially if you're angry because you want to close that distance. But once you close the distance, you're too close to hit. You're smothering your punches and your leg kicks or your kicks. On, nice high kick here, but to, to Buyev. See Hocha sitting back, perhaps looking for a showtime kick. He's in position to do so off of the wall. Instead, it's a switch kick. I like it. See the confidence of Hocha. Look at his hand position. His right hand was much higher early in this fight. He feels he's gauged the timing of Tebuyev now. And that's why Tebuyev should hit the body. Look at the head, but hit the body. 
If they have their hands down, always works because they're going to expect you to hit the head since the head the defense is not there. Nice. With the blood under the nose of Tabuyev. See the smile on the face of Hocha. Feels as though he's in full control of this fight. We've reached the final minute of round number three. Wow. I like the movement from Hocha, man. You see the clowning from Hocha now. Great angles. Asking Tabuyev to come inside. Nothing settled yet, though. The kick not getting through from the Brazilian. Low kick does land. Touch of gloves. Perhaps Hocha thought that he caught the cup with the right knee on the switch. Yeah, maybe, uh, or, or maybe a little high that he thought it was just above the knee, but it wasn't. It was great timing, a great uh, position. Oof. Swing from Tabuyev. Nice. On the trip, the takedown. Up, up, up. No ground to pound. Wayne Spinola ordering the fighters up. That's because Hoach's knees are on both the on the canvas. That happens with an inside leg trip. You know, you automatically fall in that position pretty much. Outside would be better. That is the end of our main event. Very well fought, very hard fought between Luis Hocha and Mirza Tebuya. Yeah, if I had to make a decision, I would say Hocha probably. But this could be a fight that uh, is going to go to an extra round. As you look at effective striking, it really falls to Hocha. Sitting back, waiting on the counter, but landing hard, clean, effective strikes throughout the nine minutes. Tebuyev, though, as you will see, definitely had his moments. That was the big first kick to the body. Back and forth action all the time. That was a nice setup there, left kick right straight, but get counted. Nice right hand landed there. Oh, but Tebuyev, but now he's on the ground again. I mean, you see, that's what I'm talking about. This is a very hard fight to judge. The judges assigned by the California State Athletic Commission, headed by the outstanding Andy Foster, scoring on the 10-point must system. And, and, and both fighters, it looks like they can go five rounds more. Look, they're not really breathing heavy. Both supreme great shape. Fit. Yep. But you're playing to this VIP invite-only crowd. Look on the face of both men. Acknowledged Andy Foster, the outstanding executive director of the California Commission. Acknowledgement too to the equally outstanding Corey Schaefer, president of ISKA. Back we go to our outstanding pin announcer, the legend that is, Dan Trejo. We have a split decision, Lewis Hocha! Red corner! A close fight indeed, and a split decision. The win for Luis Hocha. Next stop, a fight in his native Brazil. He will be in Rio de Janeiro. And at stake in that bout will be the inaugural Karate Combat Golden Belt in the lightweight division. Nice. I, I thought it was a very close fight, but yes, I also would have given the victory to Hocha. I just think the way he was acting with the, with the takedowns and the hand strikes and the legs all combined together gave him the victory. So I'm happy that he got the victory. Full credit to Mirza Tebuyev. Again, losing the split decision. Could never really step into the pocket, and for me, that was the difference in this fight. Yeah, and also the movement from Hocha. I mean, the, the angles that he used when his opponent came to him, he just simply moved to the side, and he was acknowledging it, like they said, with the smirk, you know? While he moved out, he gave him a straight punch, and he moved to the side. You know, stuff like that you don't see often, and especially not in karate. That is all has to come because it's full contact karate. Normally, you don't need it because after one strikes, they stop. But now here, they're gonna, they're gonna have to use it, and that's what they're doing. Every time they're getting better while we're watching them. Here's Roxy Diaz with the winner of our main event. Thank you so much, Sean. I'm here right now with Luis Hocha. Luis, it seemed like from the very beginning, you were very calculated in your moves, but you really took advantage on your third round, being the aggressor and taking advantage of him being on the ground. Was that your strategy? Eu esperava uma luta mais fácil, 
É, meu adversário evoluiu muito, desde a última luta dele, é, em julho, na Grécia, para agora. Fez uma estratégia muito boa, é, usando a envergadura, que, ele, que era a única superioridade dele. E ele fez uma estratégia que usava bem essa envergadura. Isso dificultou muito o meu trabalho. Yeah, I anticipated an actually an easier fight, but he evolved a lot. He used his range real well, but I, I was able to uh, impose my game, impose my will, and I won the fight. How does it feel that you're going to be now playing in the championship tournament in your hometown of Brazil? Como está sentindo que você ganhou essa luta com todo mundo do Brasil assistindo? Primeiramente, quero agradecer a todos os brasileiros que estão aqui. Especialmente aí, eu vi que o Verdun está aí, o Lioto. É, muito obrigado por terem vindo, vocês são meus ídolos. E estou muito feliz. Eu poderia ter feito uma luta um pouco mais ousada, mais arriscando um pouco mais, mas como era uma luta que valia a disputa do cinturão, eu estou na próxima disputa do cinturão, quero ser o primeiro campeão do Karate Combat, e por isso eu fiz uma luta mais cautelosa, buscando somente a vitória e não o espetáculo. Peço desculpa aos fãs, geralmente eu tento propor uma luta mais mais espetacular, mas hoje eu tive que jogar com a regra debaixo do braço e fazer o que tinha que fazer para sair com a vitória. It's been an honor to fight in front of my fans. It was an honor to fight in front of MMA stars like Verdum and Lioto and in front of all the, everybody in Brazil watching. It was a calculated fight. It wasn't as spectacular as I anticipated because I wanted to win the fight in front of everybody. But the next fight, for sure, you can, you can be sure I'm going to be more spectacular and I'm coming for that belt. Love it. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again on your victory. A very humble win over here, Sean. I'm going to send it right back up to you. Roxy, great stuff. Thank you very much. Takey Silva, a smart victory. He prides himself on his aggression. That was smart controlled aggression, boss. That was smart controller, yeah, and then stopping his opponent as well. So uh, I, I, I like that fight a lot. Silva grew a lot since the last time we saw him, and, and he was good already the last time we saw him. The winner in our main event of the evening, really impressive, Luis Hocha defeats Mirza Tebuya. So he now again advances in April, and Rio de Janeiro is native Brazil, fighting for the inaugural Karate Combat Golden Belt against an opponent to be determined next month in Kyoto, Japan. This will be in the lightweight division. You know, what's cool is also, you know, th this is the kind of guy who thrives on, 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 on the audience, the, the, the home, home city behind him. You know, if he's in Brazil, some people, they buckle under the pressure, other people will flourish. And this is one of those guys who probably will flourish and do a phenomenal job when he has his whole hometown behind him. So many of you were with us tonight for our seven fight main card. Others of you were with us tonight on UFC Fight Pass and Karate.com. Those were the only two outlets that had our two prelims. On our prelims, it was our knockout of the night, bout number two of the evening. It was absolutely spectacular, boss. It was, it was that big left hand, a big left hook at the end, boom. First it was a straight, and then he landed a big left hand, and his opponent said it before, I hope, I have to watch out for his left hook because it's really powerful. And unfortunately, he tasted the left hook and that was night-night. Takey Silva knocking out in round number one, the American Kevin Kowalczyk in our Karate Combat not a Knockout of the Night is presented by Origin. From fitness to nutrition to personality, Origin's DNA tests help you get the info you need to make the best choices for you. We saw knockouts, we saw smart, aggressive fighting, we saw very smart tactical counterfighting this evening. You know, we did, and, and we saw growth, and that's what I enjoy the most. We saw more people using the wall, we saw more people doing, going for ground and pound and for the takedowns. They're really coming together in this style, because it's a completely different style as what they used to do before. You know, the one punch and boom, moving back. I mean, you know, it's just very dangerous. You give one punch, you're gonna get countered. You see what I mean? So if you never trade full contact and you go to here, not training full full contact, well, you're going to be in trouble. But unfortunately for us, all these fighters saw that and realized that, and they all started working on it. I even heard that already some guys have a pit in their dojo, which is a very smart thing to do, because that's what I would do. Constantly train for the pit, because that's where you're going to fight. There weren't a lot of cages in MMA gyms in the 1990s. Now they're ubiquitous. That's what we're going to see in karate dojos across the United States, across the world, karate combat is most definitely making an impact. Boss, my brother, an absolute pleasure working with you. You and I will be back live for Karate Combat on March 8th from Kyoto, Japan. 
Go online to karate.com for fight cards, fighter news, videos, and more. Be sure to download the Karate Combat app. For the great Boss Root and Pit announcer Danny Trejo, Roxy Diaz, our entire crew, and for everyone at Karate Combat, I'm Sean Wheelock. Thanks for watching Karate Combat Hollywood. We will see you on March 8th from Japan. Right here in the heart of Hollywood, where we are no stranger to the red carpet, I am Roxy Diaz. And yes, the Avalon Theater is where all the action is going to be at. And the stars are used to mingling right here. Everybody from Frank Sinatra to Diana Ross has graced this theater. Even boxing legends of Miguel Cotto and Oscar De La Hoya to Denzel Washington, they've hung out. But tonight, it is all about karate, karate combat, where all the greatest karate masters collide. Karate combat has come to the historic Avalon, located in the entertainment capital of the world, to showcase this truly unique and electrifying combat sport, which puts a premium on aggressive striking and rapid fire finishes. On tap, an absolutely stacked card featuring nine bouts and fighters hailing from four continents and 11 nations. In our co-main event, set for the heavyweight division, you'll see the fighter from Senegal, known as Black Magic, El Haji Endur, versus the extremely hard-hitting Callum Robb of Scotland. Hey everyone, with the great Boss Root, and I'm Sean Wheelock. So glad that you're with us watching live around the world, Karate Combat Hollywood. Boss, a really intriguing co-main event, a really intriguing main event this evening, set for the lightweight division, Luis Hoja versus Mirza Tebuyev. Okay, now, the nickname from Hoja is Pitbull, and boy, does he live up to his name. This guy has everything. He's got speed, he's got technique, he's got endurance, he's got it all. What I like the most about him, though, is his tenacity. I mean, karate combat, Genesis, he had a double ligament tear in his leg, and he still fought the entire fight, almost winning the fight. Now, his opponent, he has a different story, of course. He says, I come up from a knockout, I want another knockout, I worked hard on boxing combinations, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna pick him apart. I said, well, you gotta watch out, though, because never stand in front of Roger. So go in and move to the side, that will be the best game plan. Boss, both fighters told us coming in they feel extremely comfortable fighting in the specially designed karate combat pit. You know and what a beautiful pit it is. Look at there, look at this beautiful picture there. Now, it's a specially square designed six and a half meters by six and a half meters, which is for our American fans, 21 feet and four inches. Now, I love this size because as a fighter, you will be forced to fight. And look at the special designed walls. They're in a 45 degree angle and the fighter can use those walls to his advantage. For instance, if you want to throw a spinning kick, just jump up and throw it. Three rounds, 
10 point mod system and of course we have specially designed four ounce gloves with the perfect amount of padding on the knuckles and Sean why don't you take us through the rules in karate combat punching a grounded fighter is allowed for up to five seconds submissions knees and elbows are illegal and boss I know you like the final one on this list Ooh, Elka, Keanu Reeves. What was the red or the blue pill? What, what you would have taken? <laughs> we are now set for our opening bout of the night in the middleweight division. It's Luis Diogo of Portugal versus Jonas Cohea of Brazil. Our tale of the tape is presented by Clearweather Shoes. Less corporate, more independent. All right, there we go. Oh, man, the only thing that jumps out right here is the height, arm reach, and leg reach advantage of Corhera that he has. So he will try to keep his opponent on the outside of his reach, while Diogo is going to try to fight inside his reach. Amongst the many celebrities in attendance tonight is our Karate Combat Pit announcer. Here's the legendary Danny Trejo. Fighters, advance! All right, here we go. I can't wait, my friend. This is going to be crazy. corner, Luis Loco. In the blue corner, Luis Correa. Fighters, enter the pit. Bow. Step back, step back. Ready? Fight! Fighters, fight! All right, now let's see if Correa is going to use his reach advantage. There is a call, one, two, very nice. Red glove tape for Luis Diogo, blue glove tape for Jonas Cohea, Wayne Spinola, the referee. This is again our first of nine bouts on this stack karate combat Hollywood card. I like Guerrero coming with a one-two and a left high kick. That's nice, especially if they block that last punch of his. It bypasses that defense. His opponent is waiting almost like looking for a back kick. Slow if stalking. Guerrero comes forward. Stalking pressure from Jonas Cohea. Moved to the United States go, 12 years ago from his native Brazil. Takes a spinning back kick, throws the head kick, lands the left hand. See, at least I, you know, I said he was going to throw a back kick. He missed it, though. Saw Diogo go for the takedown attempt. He's been cross-training extensively in Sancho. He's put an emphasis on takedowns and ground and pound entering this fight. Oh, he came in prepared. Nice. Yes, for the people at home, there will be takedowns, and then you can ground and pound your opponent for five seconds, go, not guys, more, go. and it all counts. Or, of course, you got to stop him, and then you win by knockout. See the switch of stances? Back to the center of the pit. Good low kick landed by Kohea. The hey, uppercut. Watch the uppercut. Heard the warning from referee Wayne Spinola. Watch the uppercut. That is an illegal strike under this karate combat rule set. Yeah, Diogo needs to come closer in order to be effective. He needs to fight inside that reach break. of Correa. Stop, stop, break clean. Go, fight. And break right back to it. Back to the center of the karate combat pick. One, two, the counter kick, the body shot, that lands flush. Down goes Diogo. And there we have the five seconds, One, round and pound. Big shots. Five seconds elapsed, that's the stand up from Spinola. And you see Kohea taking full advantage of that five second ground and pound rule. Yeah, he did a nice job. One minute remaining round number one. Again, this and all fights tonight in Karate Combat Hollywood scheduled for three three minute rounds. If a fight okay, ends in a draw after nine minutes, there is an additional three minute overtime round. 
on the rear team kick from Kohea. No oh, go. Beautiful. Getting his back leg kicked out low. Now looking for the single leg, transitioning to the double right, back to the single for Diogo. Can't find it. You know, I like that. That kick came at the moment he didn't expect it. His muscles around his calves were relaxed, so it penetrates straight through. Once the muscles are relaxed and you get kicked there, that hurts. He really likes the one two with a right high kick or a right roundhouse kick. And Kohea staying very long thus far, boss. Yep. That's what he told us he wanted to do. Stay on the outside, jabs and kicks from range. We're seeing that on full display in round number one. Spinning back kick, nothing there. Again, there's the rear teep on the entry. Good left hand on the exit, the end of round one. Collect that at the end, Collect that at the end, for each round. Oh, let's take a look at the replay that did one two with the roundhouse kick. And immediately he takes advantage of the five second ground and pound rule, as you can see over there. One more time, and that's that left kick landed, and there we go. Ground and pound. Very smart. Referee came in to stop it. I would have loved to see it two more seconds going through because he stopped it at three seconds. Heard the seconds out whistle. One minute rest between rounds. Second into the pitch, Jonas Cohea. Round two, fight! The publisher, he published a whole bunch of books, this guy. He's written four books, both in English and his native Portuguese. Prides himself on being a very smart, tactical, cerebral fighter. And you could see there he has uh, pitch control, as we call it, round and pound again, but the way he moved away from the, he wins it. Big shot. Oh, That's five seconds to stand oh, wow. up from Spinola. Diogo literally just holding on, turtling down, eating those shots. Yeah, but that was not intelligently defending yourself, right? So they could have stopped that. He shouldn't do that. Again, you see Diego, he's continually been hunting the double and the single. Shot with the low single, then the double there. Yeah, he needs to close it to him, and he figured if it's on the ground, <laughs> then I can do some ground and pound. The reach is going to be in my advantage. I like the way that Correa was moving away from the wall just before it went to the ground there. So he knows exactly where he is in the pit. Diego talked a lot about side to side lateral movement in our fighter meeting. Largely that's been absent, just avoided that kick. Spinning back fist off the mark. Yeah, that connects. That could pro uh, be a problem. Switch of stances from Kohea. This is with the rear roundhouse. Forward on the straight line is Diogo, but again, absent is that lateral movement. That's it, he needs to, he needs to come in. Diogo needs to force himself inside the region. It was a nice back kick there, but it was on the way out, so it took a little bit of steam out of it. If he would have been standing still, that could have been a hard kick. And point fighting, that's effective under this karate combat rule set. Not much of a shot. Swing and a miss with the overhand left from Diogo. Struggling to find his best offense. 125 now remaining. Round number two. Spinning back kick, well eluded from Diogo, using the wall. Some nice Mike Geary front kicks. Mike Geary, it was plural. Let's go guys, gotta keep working, here we go. Let's go. Wayne Spinola, the referee, moving things along. Two outstanding referees on this card, Wayne Spinola and Mike Bell. Familiar to combat sports fans worldwide. Come on, guys, gotta work. Let's go. Can you hear Spinola? And I like that from the referee, moving things along, definitely slowing down, or both fighters. I think it's Kohea more being tactical, and I think Diogo a bit frustrated. And I like Mike. Mike Bell, you know, he's telling him to fight. Go, because guys, uh, he's one. getting a little, see, he's complain, constantly go. complaining. He says you're gonna have to fight. There's the Mike Geary again, front kick, and another one. Followed up with punches, roundhouse kick. And for the head kick, Diogo throwing the punch, misses on the spinning back kick. Kohea stepping into that neatly. 25 seconds remaining round number two. Front kick again, effective boss from Jonas Kohea. You know, Kohea should let him escape on one side and wait for him there with a, with a left kick or a right kick. That's what I like to do in the corner. You push somebody in the corner, you give him a little space on one side. That action they're going to take, and then you catch him with a kick or with a punch. Low kick nice. down again goes Luis Diogo back to his feet. And a nice takedown from him. We are headed to the third and final round. Keep us in. 
Sobre as sovinhas, porque aí, ó. Respira, respira. Luís, oh, olha para mim. Por que é que tu não atacas? Tu não estás a fazer com o teu rancor, não ataca -me. Estás parado à frente dele, porquê? Respira. Vamos lá, tens que atacar. All right, there we go. It's a back kick. Nice back kick to the body. If he would have stand still, stood still, that would have been with big impact. You see, he took the steam out of it because he was moving backwards. Nice low kick there. It was at the end of the round. Start raining down punches right away, but Kyogo there, he flips it around and takes him down on a single leg. Didn't have time for the ground pound though. Tonight's fights are regulated by the California State Athletic Commission and sanctioned by ISKA. Using this Round unique three. and indeed revolutionary Fight. karate combat rule set. And more aggression from Diogo, and there's that powerful low kick once more to counter. He should use that more often. Set it up with some strikes, though. And especially now, you want to watch out with inside low kicks. We saw that what happened to David Donna in the Greece snapped his shin in half because he hit it the wrong way. So watch out for that. Diogo Boss seems to have abandoned those takedown attempts. He should wait for his opponent to come in and that's when you should five, go for the day. Four, four, that kick to the head. Three, Big two, round and pound. One, you hear the five up. second count again from Spinola, but go right here. Jonas right. Cohea has really been effective landing those powerful round and pound shots in this fight thus far. Yeah, the problem was though he, he went on his knees, so he didn't have a lot of space to generate a lot of force. Would have been better to stay on the feet. He has used his reach, his range very well in this fight thus far. Two minutes remaining, third and final round. Spinning back kick, nothing there. And again, we saw in round two, Kohea stepping into that kick to That's negate it. it. Yep. The Ushiro Giri. Gotta work, gotta work, gotta as they work, call it. Wayne Spinola again encouraging action between these two fighters. Luis Diogo of Portugal, Jonas Kohea of Brazil, now based in the United States. Heavy breathing from Diogo. Takes a backward step. He needs to wait for his opponent, Correa, attacks, and that he should use to go for a take. That front kick is very effective. But now he threw it with the right. Charging Can't forward with the punches. Stalemate position. Had the underhook, did Correa, but again, you have to hit an immediate takedown or throw. Shiro Yodan Gear, there was a back kick to the head. There was not a spinning one, so it was not an Uramawashi. Under this rule set, you cannot grapple. If you clinch, you have to throw or go immediately for the takedown. You can't use it to hold. Yeah. All about action here at Karate Combat. Feeling each other out. Look, there's that back kick again. He should lean that in, you know, with a cross hook and then spin. 40 okay. seconds now remaining, third That's and final good. round. That's a powerful kick. Spinning back fist, nothing there though from Diogo. Closing stages, boss. I think Diogo really has to try to open up now in the few seconds remaining. Yeah, and otherwise, he, he needs to stop it here, round number three. Because right now, he is behind on points. In my book. The bell, the end of the fight. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. That was Nora Ushiro Giri. To the head, so you can add the word Yodan, which means head. <laughs> Boss Jonas Coea, very clear-eyed, said he had a strategy. He wanted to stay on the outside, be long with his strikes. That's what we saw large in part over nine minutes. Yeah, that low kick's been using very effective. Also, the front kick has been using very effective. Left and right, that was the left one. Tripped him off there, went right away into ground and pound in round number one and round number two here. Those back kicks, they find their target, but every time they find the target when Coea is moving out. And that's why it doesn't have a lot of snap on it. Man, if he can catch him, look at the ground and pound there. He lost his balance, and now he's too close to generate a lot of force. What I always tell people is the longer a strike travels, the more power it has. So make sure you're away from your opponent.
Three judges scoring pitch side. Again, a son by the California State Athletic Commission scoring on the 10 point must system. An overtime round is a possibility. I don't think so. I think so. this is going to be Kohea's win. Yeah, I think so too. Show a sportsmanship, nice moment between these two fighters. To learn the winner of this fight, we go to Danny Trejo. The winner by unanimous decision, Zonas Correa. Yep, that's what we thought, Sean. He was pressing the action, just connected more with his hands and his kicks, and then he had to take us with the ground and pound. Strong ground and pound. Diogo really could never get in his range, couldn't fight in the pocket, couldn't find his takedowns. Yeah, those back kicks, they were really great back kicks, but he should have waited till Correa moves in and then throw that back kick, because then it's like two trains hitting each other. That is going to be effective. A strong performance from the published author and fighter, the winner by way of unanimous decision in our opening bout of the evening, Jonas Cohea defeats Luis Diogo.